welcome back, Shalligators. I know. I told you that today I was going to put up a video on Julian Huff and Brooks Leitch reconciling, even though, dude, run. And I was going to. But that was before Demi Lovato's ex, Max Eric, Eric, whatever his fucking name is, absolutely melted down on social media. Now, if you don't follow him, I don't. Why would you? Like, literally, why would you? Let me share with you some things he's been posting on his story to craft an extremely bizarre, out of nowhere, victim narrative for himself. And moreover, we're going to talk about what to do if your ex is talking shit. And not just talking shit, playing the victim. Do you defend yourself? Do you call them out? Do you show receipts? Do you just move on? We're going to break it all down. But first, just want to remind you guys to follow me on Instagram. I'm talking about this on my Instagram right now. It's ShallonXO. I also let you guys vote on topics, suggest video angles, stuff like that. It's it's fantastic. I love connecting with you guys. Also, find me on Cameo if you would like a birthday shout out, a pep talk for someone, a love quandary answered by me personally via video. Head on over there. I'm ShallonXO on Cameo. Okay, let's get into uh, what's his name? Max. Holy shit. So this has been like a two day thing. So he posted the other day that he found out, he said, imagine finding out the status of your relationship through a tabloid. Okay. He is claiming that he only found out that Demi called off their engagement via a tabloid, like the internet or something. Like, first of all, I don't know why that's something to brag about. Like, I don't know why that's something to share. You look like a clown and a cuck. Like, that's not really a good thing. And just a quick recap of this relationship, if you're not familiar with it, because again, why would you be? It has happened so fast. Like you could have blinked and missed it. These two started dating in March, went into quarantine together and came out four months later engaged. They were only engaged for two months when Demi ostensibly called it off. I mean, according to Max, he was just blindsided, blindsided, but I had no idea what was coming. You know who did know what was coming? Almost everybody else. Literally, almost all of us could see that this was a very, very stupid, ill-advised, bad relationship that was born more out of Demi's desperation to find something and certainly Max's desperation to grab onto an it girl. And we have seen evidence of him posting thirsty tweets for literally a decade at people like Selena Gomez, Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus. I mean, just this buckshot of clout chasing to anyone he could. And one of my favorite blogs, Exposing SMG, Exposing Selena Somebody Gomez. What's her middle name? Maria? Sure, Selena Marie Gomez. They have some tea that Max wasn't just hooking up with girls and cheating with Demi, because apparently that's the tea that he was cheating during quarantine with girls, but also with guys. Some Brazilian man, maybe an influencer, said that Max was like all up in his DMs and trying this and trying that. I just, I just. And they also have some dirt on Max's sort of like grand clout plan to get an it girl to fall in love with him and it worked so he also posted this so he's like oh i found out from a tabloid while you're in the middle of filming a biopic about a pastor in a christian church whose intention of the film is to help people grammatically the sentence makes no sense first of all it's y-o-u-r-e not your idiot Filming a biopic about a pastor in a Christian church whose intention of the film, whose intention of the film, this is pronoun confusion like I've never seen. None of this makes sense. Intention of the film is to help people? What are you talking about? Because you filmed a movie about a Christian person, you yourself are aligning yourself as a, like a good quality Christian man who is beyond reproach? What? This is his overarching theme, right? This is his overarching pathology. He is hollow inside. And people like him shape shift into whatever role they're playing at the time. Some of them do this literally. They're actors. You know, people like we obsess about actors. Oh, I just wanted like, it'd be great to date this actor. I have a crush on him. You have no idea how fucked up these people are. And Max Eric is the perfect example. He is hollow within. He is a con man. And people like him, they're sociopaths, if not psychopaths. I mean, I. I didn't think that before. I think it now. I think it now based on what we're going to go through. 
They inhabit whatever skin is going to get them the outcome they want. Whatever is going to be the most manipulative to their audience, to their victim, that's who they're going to morph into. And so he probably, when he was with Demi Moore, she's like, I'm going to take care of you and blah, blah, blah. And I don't care about your fame. All this shit. And now that she's kicked him to the curb and seen his true colors, which are like, his true color is like clear. He's just see-through. He's hollow. Now he's going to morph into this like good Christian boy. Like all he's posting lately is about God and Jesus, God and Jesus. Now look, it's true that when we go through hard times, it's natural for us to latch onto a higher power. Why does this happen to me? I'm going to find strength in my faith, in my faith. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. You know why I know that? True faith is quiet like confidence. It's quiet. It's a personal relationship with God. It's a personal relationship with your beliefs, the universe, the angels, whatever it might be. It is not <laughs> buckshot. Again, sorry, there's gun references. I'm in Montana now. There's buckshot sprayed about your beliefs all over everything. You're doing that to be manipulative, but we're not even close to done. So we talked about this Christian thing. Then he wrote, God bless with a dove. Leave the dove emoji out of this. We thought this was over, right? We thought this was over. It is not over. He's posting Psalm 91. Blah, 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 blah. Those who live in the shelter of the most high. Blah, 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 blah. It's a Psalm, whatever. The Lord says, I rescue those who love them. Rescue them. It's very much a victim statement. Psalm 91 is for victims. People who've seen shit. Hebrews wandered 40 years in the desert. Not a clout chasing sociopath who got rightly dumped by a woman who finally woke the fuck up. He goes on. Okay. He writes this note. I was on the set of my new movie, all caps, Southern Gospel, with crew and cast members right next to me who literally watched me open my phone where I then opened a tablet. Does he have a second grade education? What are these sentences? Does, is he posting this so I can correct the grammar? I will, I will diagram the fuck out of the sentence. Who literally watched me open my phone. Honey, no one's watching. He, like, he, he acts like he's like Barack Obama. Like, oh, everyone's like in this war room watching every move. Like, okay. This is the God's honest truth. He references God and Jesus. I want you to do a shot every time he brings up God. No, you'll be in the ear. This is the God's honest truth of how I found out about the ending of, of the engagement. Not my engagement, the engagement. That's a very critical sentence the ending of the engagement that shows his detachment right the engagement this thing that i was involved in not like losing my fian that my fiance broke up with me he never mentions her he mentions the engagement as though it's a business arrangement and for him it was and have people from my film who saw the whole thing go down and help me get back into character to continue my job back into character I want you to keep that in mind because on one hand, he's posting all this God and Jesus stuff, right? And he's trying to make that, oh, this is authentically who I am. I'm a good Christian man. Well, if you're such a good Christian man, getting into character as a good Christian man shouldn't be that hard. I wouldn't need help getting back into character as say a YouTuber. I wouldn't need a lot of help in that category. I could just be like, and we're here, we're here. Also, this is self-aggrandizing. All these people who helped me get back into, oh, cause you're the big bright shining star of this like straight to video on demand, like L list film. Okay. I had cast and crew with families relying on me to do my job. Ugh. I actually didn't read that before. Oh, my dog trying to get it. Cowboy, you're fine. So many needs. I cast and crew with families relying on me to do my job. That being said, please end this narrative. It's been over, my dude. Every, everyone is done with you, okay? Demi, me, the whole, just, you're the only one talking about it. Please end this narrative and focus on other more important issues in the world. Where have we heard that before? Literally every celebrity who gets attacked. Kylie faking her billionaire status. Um, Aren't there more important things to think about? That's what every guilty person says, right? Not that, I mean, I guess innocent people could say that too, but it's it's the classic reversal. It's like, you're so lame for thinking about this. Is, isn't there more to think about? And you know, that's true. A, a lot of times, that is very valid a lot of times. It's just not in this case. <laughs> I love and forgive everyone involved. 
okay, so the last 50 words, 75 words you used were not about forgiveness at all. And if you really had forgiven people, you wouldn't feel the need to post this, but also forgiven them for what? For what? Of everyone involved. You're implying a conspiracy. That's further self-aggrandizement, right? It's interesting how people like him, toxic, hollow, narcissists, possibly socio and psychopaths, they at once, they create a conspiracy. It's the whole world against me. And we hear this with toxic people. Everyone's lying about me. Why would you believe all your friends when they said that they saw me kissing someone? Why would you, they're all lying about me. It's me, it's us versus them, right? It's the whole world's against me and I'm a victim. I at once have all this power. There's all these people relying on me and I'm just, it's my movie and getting the character and the whole cast and crew is looking at me. But right after that, it's, and I'm a victim. Ah, I forgive you. Ooh, I'm such a victim. Well, which is it, bro? I am not a hollow person. Neither are you guys. And you know, we don't default to victim narratives. It's unbecoming. It's unattractive. It's repellent. So I will say one of those things. I got all this power, baby. Self-aggrandizement. I don't lapse into the victim narrative. Like I said, it's, it's off-putting. And I don't feel that way because I have personal power. He doesn't. He is a constant emotional shapeshifter to vampirically suck the life out of his victims. And we talked about this in yesterday's video, the day before his video, how to spot a love bomber. They are draining you. He closes with, I love and forgive everyone involved. Let us be, let us heal. God bless. What in the name of a Celine Dion fucking song is this? Let us be, let us heal. Who is us? Are you talking about the royal we? Is this a partnership? What are you talking about? The self-aggrandizement. He isn't even speaking in, in singular person. He's speaking in dual person, in third person. Let us heal. It's all of us. He's psychotic. He's fucking psychotic. Not done. We are not actually even close to done. Then he posts a screenshot of a text. To, that he sent, we all know with the blue, blue means you sent it. To find out over the internet was beyond anything I could have ever imagined a person could do to another human. Then he pulls the gap, leave me alone. Well, you're the, it was your text. So you didn't receive that text. Are you, are you saying, are you saying leave, leave you alone? Leave yourself alone. You, the text, leave the meal. What? I feel like I'm having a stroke reading these these posts. Leave me alone. You are alone, brother. Let's, let's go back to that. End this narrative. It's over. Your career's over and nobody cares about you. You are never going to fucking Hollywood again. Like you're psychotic. Okay. You got to go to like Iowa and just start over. <sighs> this one is the most delicious. It's a screenshot of a text between ostensibly him and I don't know, it was manager, somebody, somebody, who, who even knows? Could be some chick who works at Arby's that he pretended to be his manager. Hey, Max, times two. The homeowner just messaged me and said that, the homeowner just messaged me that their neighbor said the kayak, K-Y-A-C-K, that's not how you spell it, is in the middle of the lake and someone is there grilling. She wants to know if it's you or if she should call the police. Please advise ASAP. Now, ostensibly, Max is in, I think, Atlanta, filming this horseshit movie that literally no one's gonna see. He writes back, it's not me. They should call the police. I'm on set filming my movie uh, with a picture that looks like it's a screen cap from Saw in 2005. Okay. Like, are you filming this movie on an iPhone 4? What is this? Like a, like a laser disc? Who is, who is on set there? What is this supposed to be? What? So what he's saying? is someone broke into his rental house. Now, what, what do people, what do robbers do? What do they do? They break in, what are they after? What are they after? Are they after jewelry? No. Are they after like electronics, like your TV and your computer? Nope. Are they even after maybe drugs you could have? Uh-uh. They're after your barbecue and they're not gonna take it. They're gonna stay there. They brought all sorts of meats and cheeses and sides and spreads and a blanket. And they're gonna stay there for several hours and grill. And then they're gonna take the kayak out in the lake too. What? What are you fucking talking about? Do you think anyone is buying this? You sound insane. You sound insane. You think you're honestly saying people broke into your house to have a barbecue? In the middle of the day? Cause it's light outside, so there's it's the daytime. I mean, obviously they're barbecuing. Nobody barbecues like in the at three in the morning. It's not a three a.m. kayak and barbecue session. 
He ends this, or he captions this, and by the love of God and Jesus Christ, and by the love of Jesus, I'm invoking the Holy Spirit. Are you performing an exorcism? What's happening? And by the love of God and Jesus Christ, please don't send people to break into my home again. Okay. Okay. So not only did someone break in your house to have a teddy bear picnic, it was an organized attack it was like a tactical maneuver orchestrated ostensibly by Demi Lovato you think the woman who dumped you who didn't even care enough about you to dump you in person according to you which I'm sure she did by the way I'm literally fucking sure she did she did care enough to get on the phone to like 1-800 crime syndicate like hey do you guys have anyone you could send to my ex-fiance's house in atlanta no i don't want his legs broken i don't want his stuff taken i would love it if you guys could bring some like you know like maybe some uh like barbecue stuff you know some short ribs maybe a few a few hot dogs yeah no cheddar brats are fine that's totally fine just go on over there have a barbecue take the kayak out actually um that'll really show him Can you believe she put up with this man for six months? Can you believe it? Can you believe she had that psychopath in her house for that long? What on earth is wrong with him? He has also posted things like on his Instagram, him getting baptized. What an emotional, beautiful experience. I got baptized. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I thought you were already like a really super Christian person. So you haven't been baptized? That's crazy. I did when I was like four. That's fine. A lot of people aren't. But he posted that to purposely blur the lines between playing a pastor and being a pastor. Why? Because again, he has that hollowness. There is nothing inside of him. And so he's got to try to shape shift into this person because it's fitting his current narrative. If he was, say, playing a vigilante mobster, would he be like, yeah, I'll send that bitch to my house. I'm going to bust the cap and, uh, like, and then call the mafia. I don't know even know what that accent's supposed to be. But would he be like inhabiting that if he was playing a cowboy he'd be like i'm gonna ride into the sunset if he was playing a drag queen he'd be like shade fierce like would he who would he be who would he be how could he default to this character if he wasn't just happened to be playing them to begin with so what can we learn here we're gonna make this a short video the fuck do we do if this is happening to us and it has happened to us we have all been trash talked, whether it's by an ex or an ex friend or uh, bosses or whatever. People have said unspeakable things about me, unspeakable. And it's, it's so much worse when they're, <laughs> it's hard to say if it's worse when it's true or when it's not true, you know, because if things, if you've done something in the past and it's like brought up, like you cheated on someone and then it came up and everyone found out about it, you're like, oh, like you're trying to move on from it. You've maybe learned your lessons. You've dealt with it. Maybe you've dealt with it with your partner and now it's coming back up and you're like, oh, it's like a zombie coming back to life. I think it's worse when things aren't true, you know, because then it's, it's injustice. It's crime. It feels like crime perpetrated against you. You're a, you truly feel like a victim. And what the fuck is worse than someone who is a victim having their perpetrator act like the victim? It's, unco it's absolutely unconscionable. I had a friend in college. Her boyfriend studied abroad in Amsterdam. And you know what he brought her back? Chlamydia. That's what he brought her back. And he had the audacity to accuse her of giving it to him. And she was like beside herself, like getting, it's like the only guy she'd slept with. She hadn't slept with anyone while he was gone. And she, she truly like didn't know where it had come from. And he was like, well, you must have fucked someone else. And she's like, I didn't. He's like, well, guess she did. And she almost started to believe it. She's like, maybe, you know, I hooked up with this guy and maybe it was dormant. And I'm like, it's so messed up because she's the victim and she doesn't even know it. You know, or if she does, she's trying to defend herself as the victim, but also dismantle his victim narrative. It was just so incredibly twisted. I, he's a pencil salesman now. So my curse worked out perfectly. But what do we do? I truly believe that if you give people like this enough rope, they will hang themselves. Demi hasn't said anything in response and he just keeps going and going and going and going. Because psychopaths, one of their big weaknesses, they don't know when to quit.
they have no gauge of human emotions, you know? So they don't know if people are like, oh, like buying it or not buying it. And so they see maybe silence as like a victory or they see, you know, people lending a little bit of support and it's just, it's a green light for them and it eggs them on and on and on. So much of the time, all you have to do is sit back and just wait for them to implode, wait for them to look like such a fucking clown. But in the meantime, waiting that out can have a lot of real consequences. We know this. I mean, I remember when like people were making hate videos about me and like a lot of, not, not a lot, but like some fans turn on me. They're like, you know what? Yeah, fuck Shallon. I hate her now. And I was just like, bye. It was, I mean, it was painful because I'm like, you know what? You literally say, wow, she's helped me so much, but I hate her. She can go die. That's what people were saying. Like you are literally such a loser, but that's the thing. You're a loser. And thank you for self-identifying, weeding yourself out of the chalantourage. This is no place for losers and hateful people. And now I know like I never could have helped you. I doubt, I doubt very strongly I helped you because you were the problem. You're the problem in all your relationship. It's not the fuck boys. It's not your parents. It's not your friends. It's you. And it's going to be you for the rest of your life. You've chosen that, you've decided that. So I say this because if you have an ex who's talking shit and people are believing him, let those people go. Uh, let them go, let them go, okay? I know that that's so hard and it's unfair and it's a further, it's, it's further collateral damage of this crime that's being perpetrated against you, right? But we have to smoke these people out. The analogy I always use is like looking at your pores in the mirror, like late at night. You, ostensibly, you don't want to find anything in those pores, right? You want clean, clear pores. But when you do find something, you're like, just dig it out. I'm going to dig it out with my nails. It's kind of like that. I don't want to find bad people in my life. But when I do, I'm like, oh, you're getting purged. And you can just like squirt them out of your life. And they're gone. And it's just like on your skin, might be red for a while, might hurt, might leave a mark, but eventually it's clear and it's clean and it goes away and that's a healthier place now. Same with your life. And it's painful and it's gonna be people you don't think who might take your ex's side. And you know what? They're gonna look like a fucking clown too. The least, no, the less you say, the better. Say less, say less. I know that I'm like such a blabbermouth and for me to give the advice of say less is like kind of like, really? Cause you say all the things. Say less, say less in terms of defending yourself, say less in terms of trying to convince people who have had the audacity to maybe believe this asshole talking shit about you. It's like, okay, no, hey, if you, if you think I sent people to break into his house and host a barbecue, I wish you luck in the future. That's fine, we don't need to talk anymore. Because sometimes what those people are doing in the middle, they just like the drama. They just like the circus and they bought a ticket and you're the monkey. They're like, dance, dance, dance. I'm not a fucking monkey and this isn't a circus. This is my life. So if you're here to sit in the front row and have a show and get your popcorn, you're in the wrong fucking place. Theater's closed. I'm not going to make a sales pitch to keep anyone in my life from a guy to a, a, a boss to a friend. If someone has decided to believe things about me that make no sense logically or emotionally or like behaviorally from my track record. People who I assume had been in my corner, you know, friends or whatever, and then X was saying something, then I need to know that you actually aren't a friend. I need to know that as painful as it is. So unless they are saying things about you that are either one, extremely easy to disprove, like she cheated on me with like Justin Bieber, when those girls were like, he raped me and he's like, actually, I wasn't even at that hotel. Here are the literal Airbnb receipts. I can tell you where I was. If you can shut something down that effectively and that quickly, great, okay. But with Demi, it's like, how do you prove the negative? How do you prove you didn't send a gang of barbecue vigilantes to this fuckface's house, right? That's just like, okay, is this what we're gonna do? No, and he's making these outlandish claims to draw her into a war. People like him, they can't differentiate between positive and negative attention. They don't care. Attention is attention because attention is power. Attention is power because attention is energy. And when you give your energy to something, you're giving your power to something because energy is currency. We recognize that when we give our money to something, we're giving our power, we earn that money, we, it's hard to come by. We give it away, we're giving away power. I have less money now, I have less things that I can buy for myself, do for myself, because I've given it to you. You now have some of my power. Energy 
must be viewed in the same way. When you engage with these people who are talking shit about you, when you engage with people who are slandering you with bigger and bigger and bigger things to try to draw you in, because like I said, they don't care about positive or negative attention. It's all just attention. It's all just currency. Bad money is the same as good money. You are spending your precious non-renewable resource, energy and time. And what are you getting out of it? Nothing. You are just making them richer. As they have defined richer, that's what you've made them. And it's hard. It's hard to not spend money. It's hard to not spend energy. It's hard not to spend time. But we do it, we don't spend money because we acknowledge, okay, well, we're, we're gonna need that money. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna blow it here. I'm gonna need it. You're gonna need that energy in that time. To do what? Because in the moment you're like, well, what is more important than defending myself? Healing yourself. That's what's more important. You can defend yourself until you're blue in the face. Sometimes you just look worse and more guilty, even if you're not. That's just, sometimes people, like they lie better than they tell the truth. Like you just, because when you're gassed up about something and the truth comes out and it's kind of awkward, and you're like, but I, did, I didn't do that. I, I didn't. But if you like have a lie ahead of time, you're like, no mom, I was with Sarah tonight. You know, like <laughs> it kind of comes out slicker at times. You could, so it's like, you're spending this currency without any return on investment. But if you reinvest in yourself, why did I get caught up in this dude? What have I learned about red flags and human behavior? What have I learned about friendship? And the people who have now flipped on me, did I see warning signs? Am I actually more at peace not having them in my life? I mean, it's painful that they left in the way that they did, but now that they're gone, now that this poor is clean, do I actually feel better? So much of the time, all we need is just a little clarity to see what people are made of. And even, even more than that, the questions I get from you guys, 99% of the time, it's never, I didn't know. I didn't know he was like this. I didn't know she was like this. I didn't know. It was, I knew and I chose to ignore it. Stop ignoring it. There's writing on the wall. There always is. It's up to us whether or not we want to read it. And if we don't, it's to our own doom. Let people reveal who they are. And then you can tailor your response. And nine times out of 10, no response is exactly the right response. It pours ice over their stupid bullshit machinations to draw you into a fight so that they can further continue their victim narrative. Why do they get to do that? Haven't they taken enough? There's nothing at, that, at the end of that rainbow. There's no pot of gold. This is the gold right here. Reinvest, ice them out. Like I said, give them enough rope to hang themselves. They're clowns and they will. I'll see you later, shalligators. Mwah!